In this episode, we'll take a look at the Epifan Video Pearl Nano for streaming and recording. First off, let me cover what the Pearl Nano is. I think for a lot of us that are coming from the world, say, for example, of things like the Blackmagic ATEM Mini, the Pearl Nano is a very different device. And so I want to talk about first what it is. So it's a single channel video recording and streaming hardware encoder. It's designed really for lecture capture, corporate communications, and remote video contribution applications using live SRT feeds. And we'll talk about what all that means in more particular a little bit later in the video. I would say the focus is really on making super simple operation for corporate presentations and class lectures or remote operation and administration. So some things that the A10 Mini may not be the best choice for, for example, if we're talking about it from that perspective. So who is this for? This is really for education institutions, so secondary schools, colleges, universities, I think you're more likely to see it in the corporate world, especially, for example, if you have remote employees or various offices around the world where you need people from each of those offices to be able to contribute to an overall presentation. This would be a pretty good choice. That's really where I see it kind of making the biggest difference, especially when you have several remote people that need to contribute to a single event or recording. So that's what the Pearl Nano is. What is it really not? Just to clarify from here so that I don't waste your time. First of all, it's really not a direct competitor with traditional broadcast switchers or even kind of this new generation of small switchers from Blackmagic or others. We're seeing a lot of these on the market in 2020 and 2021. It is not really the same thing. It's really not a switcher. This is an individual contributor type of device. And I'll talk about what that means in more particular terms later on. I would also say that the Pearl Nano is really not optimized for, I would say, amateur enthusiast live streaming. So if you're live streaming to YouTube or Twitch and you're doing it for fun, you're not getting paid to do it necessarily. Or even if you are, you know, monetizing a YouTube channel or whatever, it's really going to be more for, I think, corporate purposes or education. Okay, so let's talk about what the Pearl Nano does that a lot of other devices don't do. First of all, it has both HDMI and an SDI input, one of each. And it does have scalers on it, so it will take the input signal and adjust its resolution. You can actually even input a 4K signal, and it will downscale that to 1080p. As of March 2021, the output on the Pearl Nano is 1920 by 1080 at 30 or 60 frames per second. The scaler can adjust the frame rates and also the resolution. Epifan will have an upgrade pack coming later this year, so basically a firmware and a license that you purchase to be able to output in UHD as well. So that is coming if that's something that you need. Another thing that's kind of unique about the Pearl Nano that you don't find on the ATEM switchers is that it has a USB input and in that USB input, you can plug in a USB microphone and it recognizes it, it acts as the host and then you can use your USB microphone directly into the encoder. So that's a really cool feature. You also have dual XLR inputs to feed audio from a mixer into the Pearl Nano. So if you do have a more traditional, say, classroom or corporate kind of studio type of setup where you do already have a mixer so that you can mix multiple audio sources together, you can easily just take two lines out from your mixing board to get a left and a right into the Pearl Nano and you're on your way. Now, just to clarify, those XLR inputs do not supply phantom power. They are not mic level inputs. They are line level inputs. You can also take an RTSP stream in, so you could bring an IP camera into the Pearl Nano as a source as well. One of the coolest features from my standpoint is you can also bring in an SRT stream from anywhere on the internet into your Pearl Nano as another source. So the cool thing about that is that means that anyone that can transmit an SRT stream, and you can use online platforms to do that, and you, you can feed that from anywhere on the internet over to the Pearl Nano and that becomes an input. So I could plausibly actually do a two person show on my Pearl Nano, bring in one of my friends. So it's basically like having an ATEM streaming bridge built into the Pearl Nano. In terms of the encoder in the Pearl Nano, as I mentioned before, it's a 1920 by 1080, 30 or 60 frames per second encoder in March of 2021 
with an upgrade coming later in this year for UHD streaming. In addition to that, there will also be an upgrade to encode to H.265 or HEVC, the high efficiency video codec as well. As I mentioned before, you can bring an SRT stream in as an input, but you can also stream an SRT stream from the Pearl Nano to another device as well. And that's where I think this really kind of comes into its own. This is where it makes a lot of sense as a remote contributing type of device. So if I have one of the other products in the Pearl line, and in fact, the Pearl Nano is just one product in a suite of products. There's also the Pearl 2, and there's the Pearl Mini. The Pearl 2 is actually much more like a switcher from the standpoint that it has far more inputs, but it can also take your SRT stream from multiple sources, wherever in the world, bring them all together and create a really beautiful layout to stream that together. So pretty powerful ecosystem overall. There are some other things you can do as far as encoding as well. You can do an HLS stream. An HLS stream is something where if you want to stream directly to your own website, for example, you could do that. So if as an educator, I wanted to have a paid seminar that I did on my own platform, I could stream directly to my own website for paying customers, for example. Now, if you do need to stream to platforms like YouTube or Twitch, all of that's supported as well with an RTMP stream. And I think one of the killer features is you can stream to multiple destinations at the same time. So any of those different types of streams, encoding streams that we talked about earlier, you go to multiple of those at the same time, which is really pretty powerful. In terms of outputs on the back of the unit, we do have an HDMI pass-through to have a local monitor. This makes a lot of sense, for example, in a corporate presentation or even in a lecture in a classroom where a professor or some presenter could have a slide deck that they have on their laptop. So that comes into the HDMI input and then also goes to the HDMI pass-through to show in a local monitor or projector within the presentation space. Of course, there's an HDMI output. That is the program output or what you're going to be streaming. So you can put that on a confidence monitor if you needed to do that. And there is also a headphone jack for monitoring, which we didn't see on the ATEM Mini, at least until the most recent version with the Extreme. But they have that built in here right on the front of the unit. Now, there is something called a layout within the Pearl Nano. And the layout is essentially a way to combine multiple sources. So, for example, if I were a lecturer, I could have two input sources, say, for example, a laptop with, again, some slides and also a camera say for example, coming in via SDI, I could also bring in some pictures and I could also put some text on the screen as well. So while the Pearl Nano only supports a single layout, it's still a pretty powerful thing. On the front of the unit, there is a small screen. You can use it as a confidence monitor, but it also allows you to navigate through the menus to make changes to the settings. In terms of power, you can power it two different ways. It does come with an AC adapter, but if you have a network that you're gonna be connecting to that can supply power over ethernet or PoE plus, then you can just plug in the ethernet cable and that will power the unit without having to use the AC adapter. There is also an SD card slot on the front for recording in addition to streaming. And there's also a slot on the bottom where you can add an M2 SSD drive. So if you need even more storage, you can do that as well. In addition to that, you can plug in a USB drive. So pretty much three different ways to record your different streams. Now, here is where the Pearl Nano really kind of shows one of its biggest strengths, again, for educational purposes or even for corporate as well. And it does have some integrations with a variety of education CMS systems, namely Panopto and Kaltura. So what these allow it to do is that it actually allows scheduling and distribution of lectures or live classes. So this is really powerful if you're going to be in an education type scenario where your students need to be able to access the class live or be able to watch it later. And in fact, from the Pearl Nano, you can actually set it up in its settings. As soon as the stream is done, you can actually upload the recorded file into one of these CMS systems where it will actually store it in that lecture for later access by all the students. Again, to show some of its strengths as far as the corporate and education markets, it does have some network security features, 802.1x, and also HTTPS, and you can upload security certificates into the device itself. So you got a lot more control over something like this, and that's gonna be something that's really gonna shine if you're in an environment where you have a whole bunch of these <laughs> spread throughout your entire network and need to be able to remotely administer them. Now, speaking of remote administration, 
The Perl Nano supports something in the Perl ecosystem, which they call the Epifan Cloud. What that allows you to do is that remotely, you can access the device and actually change all of its settings if you have an administrator login, or you can also be set up as just an operator to remotely manage the Perl Nano. So you can start and stop recordings and things of that nature without necessarily getting in and changing all the other settings. But it gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of how to support your presenters and your faculty if you're in that kind of situation. You can save multiple configurations, which is really useful as well. So for example, if I, as a corporate video shooter, am going to need to bring in a remote guest, and we don't have one of these for every one of our remote employees, <laughs> but what I could do is actually set it up, configure everything, including the SRT stream, for example, to get it back to the main office where I have another Perl device. I could put it in a kit with a camera and a microphone, ship it off to my remote contributor, and then give them an instruction sheet on how to connect the three things together. And then a lot of the configuration is already done, so basically they just have to plug it into a network and it can contribute that SRT stream. So it makes this whole process of doing really high quality contributions from remote locations a lot easier. Now again, the Perl line is something that's been around for a while and it actually also has a hardware integration for something called LiveScript. So if, for example, you're doing a presentation and you need live closed captions, you can bring in that LiveScript hardware, connect it into your Perl Nano, and it can do real-time closed captioning. So that's really, really powerful. Now, there are a couple things about this device that are a little rough around the edges that I think I should point out. First of all is the fan in the Perl Nano is quite loud. And in fact, here's a little sample. Here I'm using a condenser microphone. It is on this boom arm right here. Just kind of show you there. It is a condenser cardioid microphone, which means it has a polar pattern which picks up mainly on the front and rejects from the sides. But here we have the Nano sitting probably, you know, I'd say 30 centimeters from the capsule of the microphone. Here, I'll move it a little farther away. That's probably 45 centimeters. Now, presumably this is something you're gonna have close to your presenter, I would assume, but you know, not necessarily. I guess you could have it a little farther away. In any case, you're gonna to need to kind of maybe, if you have a podium from which they're gonna presenting, you're probably gonna to wanna to put it down on one of the lower shelves. So it's not making a bunch of noise getting into the microphone. The resizing of inputs on the layouts is a little bit rough around the edges right now. I understand that they're already working on that. So that'll come in a firmware update we hear within the next little while. The other thing that was a little rough is that if you pop that SD card out and just plug it into your computer, my computers couldn't read it. I put it in a Mac, also put it in a PC. Neither of them could recognize it, but you can still download the files, of course. You just do it through the web interface, which is how you can control the Pearl Nano. So overall, I hope that was helpful for you, even if you're not working in a corporate environment or an educational institution environment where you need something like this. I hope it was helpful for you to understand some of the different types of features you might see in something that is designed for those environments. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Music